Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, how on earth do I sum up in the little time I have my feelings and grave concerns about the biggest issue to dominate our political landscape since the Second World War? How on earth do I represent the outpouring of emotion, the sense of division, anger, confusion and disenfranchisement experienced by the citizens of our country and those in my constituency of Canterbury? People are angry with us. They are angry for so many different reasons. Angry because they were led to a cliff edge wearing a blindfold by a privileged and reckless few, then told to jump without knowing how soft or hard the landing would be or if they would indeed survive the fall. Angry because of the distortion, propaganda and willful manipulation of facts for political gain. Angry because Parliament is currently unable to function and politicians debating the issue repeat the same hollow sound bites over and over again, ad infinitum like a broken record. Some of those few that led us here are long gone, or indeed have never graced these green benches themselves. They are safely and comfortably sitting back, enjoying vast private wealth reserves, watching from a distance as others are left having to untangle their legacy. Let us remember that out there are millions of ordinary people who have done exactly what successive governments have always encouraged them to do, worked hard, paid their taxes, kept going when times were tough. There are families who have built and lost businesses, seen jobs come and go, watched as their communities felt the tightening grip of recession and then the nasty, strangling hands of relentless austerity. People like this feel betrayed by us, the politicians. I'm here to speak honestly for and on behalf of the people of my constituency in Canterbury, people who have written to me in their thousands. Mr Speaker, I would struggle to find a single comparable constituency in terms of the direct impact that could be caused by Brexit. In Canterbury, we have the University of Kent, also known as the European University, along with Canterbury Christchurch University. These are the biggest employers in our area. They rely on their close links with Europe. Strong academia relies on exchange programmes, European partner campuses and freedom of movement for those who teach the next generation of British workers. Tourism and hospitality is the biggest employer of under 30s in my area. Canterbury is very often the first place EU visitors stop when they come into the UK via our Kent terminals. Our beautiful cathedral receives around a million visitors every year. Our whole constituency welcomes over 7 million visitors. Those visitors stay in our hotels and B&Bs, use our restaurants, visit our independent retail businesses and study in our language schools. They drink in our pubs, enjoy our apples, they eat our local oysters and chips on Whitstable Beach. They wonder at the English vineyards they drive past, through villages such as Barham and Chartham, now producing and exporting some of the best wines in the world. Major employers such as the Kent Brewery Shepherd Neem, based in Faversham, and the Whitstable Oyster Company, tell me that seamless import and export is vital to any post-Brexit future in our area. Our hospitals also have research departments benefiting from close borderless cooperation with their EU partners. Local businesses in the Canterbury and Whitstable area rely heavily on the relatively easy free flow of traffic to and from the port of Dover. Economic success is wholly dependent on there not being huge problems caused by Operation Stack or Brock, causing tailbacks for miles and miles down the M26, M2 and M20. One example is Barton Marine, an award-winning manufacturer of bespoke specialist equipment used in sailing and also the theatre industry. Sorry, if I come up, run out of time. <laughs> okay. They employ around 30 local highly skilled people in their Whitstable factory, and the CEO tells me she's uncertain of their future. Thank you.